Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? I'm Slightner, this is Waves over here. In this video, let me show you exactly how to add a customer to our bank problem program. We have been talking about this program for the past several videos. If you guys haven't seen that video, these videos previously, please check the link in the description text below where I have posted everything regarding these videos. So here I am on NetBeans. If you guys remember the last video, as the user the choice, and then when the user says case one. We have to deal with the fact of adding a customer. Now there are several steps into this. First of all, you have to ask how much money the person wants to deposit the first time while they are creating an account because it's about a new customer. Then you ask the person to enter the account number. Now here I'm asking the person to generate the account number. Now you could have your own method like maybe generating a random number and assigning that as the account number or something but I'm not doing that because I want to keep things simple. Then we create the account object and let's actually work this out first. So I'm going to go down to the comment section here. First option is to ask the user to enter some amount. <clears throat> so at this point I say that creating a new account for a customer and please enter the initial amount in your account. Again the user will type something on this output window over here and that entire line is going to be read with the help of reader dot read line. So I'm going to say reader. So now this is going to go inside a variable called double val because it's money remember it can be 100.5 bucks and hence we need to put a double over here at this point again there is an error because buffer reader dot read line gives you a string and what you have on the left hand side is a double so we need to perform the type casting I'm gonna say double dot parse double now again this double class has a special method called parse double that will take a string and it will return a double converted from that string this is how things work now this is the first step now there are several other steps that we need to follow when creating the account number the second thing to ask would be please enter your account number now here we are giving the user the choice of selecting his own account number so at this point again the user is going to type something in that line in the output window and that entire line must be read so I'm going to say buffer reader dot read line again and this time we can directly put it inside a string account number or ACC for short over here so this string is going to contain the account number the user directly entered because remember buffer dot read line also returns a string which means this assignment is perfectly valid now the next step that we need to do is to create the account object from this balance and this account uh, that we just asked the user in other words we ask the balance we ask the account number now if you go down to the class account you will see that we have a constructor that takes a balance and takes the account number right so let's use that constructor and create an account object to represent this account just created. I'm going to say account, account over here equals to new account. And this time it's going to ask the two parameters that we already had, the balance and the ACC. And that creates our account object for this customer. Now the next thing to do is to obviously ask the customer's name. Again, let's have our system.r.println over here and we'll say please enter your name at this point again the user is gonna type something that entire line must be read so I'm gonna say string name over here equals to buffer reader dot read line so at this point the account object is created and the customers name has been taken now let's go down and look at the customer class in a little more detail if you guys remember the class customer has a constructor that takes a string name and an account object right to show that this customer has this account that's our main purpose while doing this and hence let's go up and use that constructor to actually create a customer object I'm gonna say customer customer equals to new customer and the name will be over here the account object that we just created will also go inside that as the parameter now at this point you need to remember one thing very well every time we run case one it's gonna run this it's gonna add this customer but actually this customer value is not getting saved anywhere that means you're not supporting several customers and their data is getting saved at the same time if you guys remember inside the bank class we said a bank has several customers and we specified an upper limit saying that there can be at the most thousand customers over here so now let's add that newly created customer to this list of customers that we are supposed to have so first we need to get this inside our main method so guys remember there is a public customer get customer method that returns the array so at this point we need to add this newly created customer into the list of customers that our bank has 
So we need a reference to this array inside our main method. And not only that, if you go here to case one, every time this while loop keeps running and someone presses one here, that's gonna go inside choice and case one is gonna run again and again, right? That means every time you also need to keep track of how many customers you're adding. For example, the first time someone selects presses one and case one executes, that is one customer that was added. Next time it's two, the next time it's three and so on, right? So what I'm gonna need is a variable called number of customers that I have made over here outside the while loop. Now the reason I have made this outside the while loop is because if I make it inside the while loop, every time the while loop starts running, it goes from here to case one and it comes back to case one. This is gonna be reset to zero every time. We don't want that. We want this to keep increasing as per the number of customers. So here I'm gonna go get a reference outside our while loop. I'm gonna say bank and create an object of that bank over here by saying bank, bank equals a new bank. And then I'm gonna get a reference to the list of customers or that array of customers that lies within our bank class. That can be done with this method get customer that's gonna return a reference to that array. So I'm gonna go to the top here inside the main method. I'm, I'm gonna say customer C equals to bank dot get customer. So now that I have the array outside the while loop, every time the while loop runs, this array is gonna continuously keep track of how many people are getting added. For example, I can go here and I can say C of number of customers equals to customer. So if you guys are finding this a little weird right now, don't worry. I will show you exactly what this array contains when we are going to print this out. And then after adding one customer, I increase the number of customers plus plus. So let me actually give you a rough overview of what happens. Outside the while loop, I have the bank object and I get the customer array outside the while loop. Now inside, as soon as the while loop starts running, these statements are going to execute. So if someone says one over here for adding a customer, case one will execute that means here you'll say customer customer is new customer whatever name and the account the user entered then it's gonna be C of number of customers which is nothing but zero initially right so in other words it's C of zero equals to customer and that zero actually becomes one over here when we say number of customers plus plus now let's say once again the user is gonna enter one to add another customer at that time it will be customer customers new customer for that name and for that account then it's gonna be C of 1 because now number of customers is 1 remember equals to customer and then number of customers plus plus will become 2 so let me actually illustrate this by printing these values out so at this point I have just illustrated this by using a system dot error print ln that prints the value of this variable number of customers it also has a for loop here that shows what is the content of the array by first printing the number of names. So now let's run this and let me show you exactly what happens. I say shift F6 right now. As you guys notice, the while loop starts running. It says add customer. I'm gonna click one over here. Enter the initial balance 100 A122 as the account number, Wives as the name. And at this point, as you guys notice, it says number of customers is one and Wives is the name. Now once again, if I select add customer by pressing one, this time it's gonna ask me the same stuff. I'm gonna press 100, A123 over here. The name is Anki. And this time, notice carefully, it says number of customers is two because we are printing the variable number of customers. Now the first customer is Viv's name. The second customer is Anki and space name. And that prints because of this for loop that we have written over here. So this is how this works. So I hope you guys have understood something about how the customers are getting added. So let me remove these statements and we are good to go. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to perform the deposit, the withdraw, checking balance, and the other stuff that we have remaining. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.